Sri Lanka's Prime Minister just released a statement inspiring about as much confidence as your pilot living a cockpit with his parachute on. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, if you look out the right side window, you're going to see our wing making a slow descent. Now he said, we are now facing a far more serious situation beyond the mere shortages of fuel, gas, electricity, and food. Our economy has faced a complete collapse. Tell me what you really think. So how did things get so bad that the leader of a country is now saying, alright, beyond no gas, no electricity, no food, well, cherry on top, our economy is facing complete collapse. But to start this episode, let's answer the most glaring question most of you are probably asking. Where in the world is Sri Lanka anyways? Now Sri Lanka is an island dangling off of the southern tip of India. This places it in the geopolitical crossroads of several prominent countries. Want to sell things from China to the west without having to deal with India? Pick up a port in Sri Lanka. Want to turn Sri Lanka into a military logistics hub for controlling the Indian Ocean? Have the IMF loan them a bit of money and hope for the best, or in this case, the worst. Please, please, please default so I can use that as leverage debt for more control over your country. Now, everyone wants to make a deal with Sri Lanka, so the question is, how are they struggling more now than ever? There are three tangentially related problems slamming Sri Lanka right now that somehow come to connect at the end of the episode. First, we got a currency crisis, a debt crisis, and a shortage crisis. Put simply, they owe a lot of money, need a lot of money, and don't have a lot of essentials. To get started, let's talk about the headline generating problem, the debt defaults. Now, These defaults carry with them some major consequences. Take for example when Sri Lanka defaulted on their debt to China in 2019. They actually had to surrender control of the major Sri Lankan port to China for 99 years, a port that they had taken out those loans to build. Oof. Today's 2022 defaults on the other hand involve China's counterweight, the IMF. Sri Lanka owes a eye-watering $50 billion to the IMF and they just missed a regularly scheduled interest payment. Sounds like America is about to get some shiny new Sri Lankan military bases. Now, Unfortunately for Sri Lanka, it looks like they're no longer begun to be able to comply with the very ambitious terms that were set out in their loan contract with the IMF, which means that it's time for renegotiation. Now, in this case specifically, the collateral backing the loan is the fact that Sri Lanka needs a whole bunch of new money right now, and the IMF has just a whole bunch of fresh money sitting there to give on their terms. According to Sri Lanka's Prime Minister, a bailout from the IMF is the only option to avert an impending economic disaster. More long term, though, the Prime Minister of Sri Lanka has laid out a plan. If we receive the IMF seal of approval, the world will once again trust us. It will help us secure loan assistance as well as low interest loans from other countries in the world. So long term thinking, more debt. Now, Unfortunately for Sri Lanka, now might be one of the worst times to be opening a refinancing conversation. As I mentioned in relation to this topic last week. Well, Jerome Powell's just now raising interest rates quite a bit in America. Now that might sound like an incredibly mundane America only issue, but the problem is that's Sri Lanka's financing competition upping their interest rate. Hmm, do I lend my money to Sri Lanka or America? Now in the previous 24 hours, the yield on 10 year treasury bonds has jumped 3%. That means that America is now paying an additional 3% on our debt since yesterday. Sri Lanka, a country that is quite a bit riskier of an investment, I mean they just defaulted on their debt, has to compete with those higher interest rates on much less risky debt. The anxiety is evident in sky high bond yields and month after month capital outflows as investors ditch their assets of vulnerable countries in favor of safer returns elsewhere. Now all this is to say that if Sri Lanka doesn't get a deal with the IMF, well they're up a creek without a paddle. 
So what does the IMF want out of all this? Well, the IMF is a bit of a weird one, because what they really want at the end of the day is control. Not in the Chinese way, where it's my way or that highway, but instead in a firmly economic sense. I'll give you this money, but in return you have to make these budget cuts, privatize that utility over there, and generally just run the country like Rand Paul's fantasy come true. Sri Lanka's Prime Minister has said its indebted country faced complete collapse, as he laid the groundwork for what are expected to be tough austerity measures as part of negotiations over its budget and an international monetary fund bailout. Now, this is all sort of the financial equivalent of shooting yourself in the foot in order to get an ambulance ride to the hospital. We need this money to save our economy, so we're going to make major cuts to our economy. So let's dig a little deeper, because to say that this is all a debt issue would be like saying COVID is a coughing issue. Well, you really did a good job diagnosing the symptom, but that's not the underlying issue generating all the symptoms. Why is Sri Lanka so desperate for cash? Fair warning, keep this debt situation I've been summarizing in the back of your head because it's going to explosively come back in the conversation in about 3 minutes or so, but for a second I'm going to talk about a completely separate issue. Currency. Sri Lanka has complete control over their own currency, the Sri Lankan rupee. Problem is, go into your local CVS and try to buy anything with a Sri Lankan rupee. Unless you're watching this from Sri Lanka, that exchange is not going to happen. Taking a step back, metaphor time. Imagine you're Churl's Entertainment Cheese, the big mouse at the top of it all. Now, sorry to my regular viewers because I realize I use this metaphor so much I can practically smell a really weird sponsorship opportunity on the horizon. This economic crisis coverage was brought to you by your local children's arcade. Still being as it is, you're Charles Entertainment Cheese. You have control over your own sovereign currency. The token. Mint more, scrap some, it's all up to you. Unfortunately though, as soon as you leave the context of the Chuck E. Cheese, well, that token's pretty much worthless. Can't use tokens to pay your bills or import those finger traps that break on first use. And of course, you can't use it to buy those PS2s in the back that are growing cobwebs. If you want to buy components or import anything from the outside world, you're going to need to turn some of those tokens into cash. So, how do you do that? Well, first, you could sell things to people who pay with dollars. At Chuck E. Cheese, that would mean getting some paying customers. In geopolitics, that means exporting things to the rest of the world. For example, America, well we pay in dollars, not Sri Lankan rupees. So if you sell us something, you're going to get more dollars into your account. Sell more internationally than you buy from abroad, and this is going to be a very short episode. Now, unfortunately, Sri Lanka spends a lot more dollars buying components and importing things from abroad than they do selling things internationally, which means that they're running up quite a deficit and losing this cash hand over fist. So, alright, maybe you're spending a lot more than you're making, but do you have a bunch of foreign reserves stored up? Well. It is not a good place to be right now. This brings us to the shortages leg of the episode. You see, cash flow in Sri Lanka has gotten so bad that they've had a delivery of Russian crude oil just sort of waiting offshore for months on end because they couldn't find the foreign currency to pay for it. In fact, Sri Lanka was just forced to close all of their schools and non-essential government operations for two weeks, citing a lack of fuel. Now it's this lack of ability to pay for essential imports like oil and food that's leading to all of the shortages and inflation that you're hearing about in the context of the Sri Lankan economy today. Well, we got 10 gallons of oil right now. How much are you guys willing to pay for a gallon? Highest bidder wins. So if you need foreign currency to keep importing essentials like food and gas, but you don't have a bunch of goods to suddenly offload and sell to raise money for it, 
what's a nation to do? Well, this is the part of the episode where those IMF loans Sri Lanka just defaulted on come roaring back to the forefront. You see, the IMF, well, they loan in dollars. Dollars that you're going to need if you want to keep importing essentials. Got to keep the IMF happy and keep those money pipelines flowing. Alternatively, if you're not the biggest fan of making major austerity measure economic changes that would be mandated by the IMF, there are other things that aren't per se goods that you could be selling. The United States military also pays in dollars and is very interested in some prime Sri Lankan real estate. Now, to be clear, the United States is currently in the <laughs> wouldn't it be crazy if phase of proposing military bases to Sri Lanka. But with new military agreements between Sri Lanka and America and preemptive anti-base protests in Sri Lanka, seems like a lot of people see this thing coming on the horizon. Heck though, you guys could make like the Philippines and collect a cool 200 mil a year in foreign currency to, you know, balance out your import-export books a little bit. Unfortunately for Sri Lanka, it looks like they don't have their own oil fields and they import all their oil. Or else, before you could even say security assistance, Exxon would have them operating at a consistent trade surplus. You see, Exxon pays generous cash royalties for complete control over foreign oil fields. Now, Sri Lanka currently remains completely opposed to permanent United States military bases being operated and opened in their country. But with an import crisis, yields on loans increasing very quickly, and their main valuable good being their geographic location, we'll have to see what happens. It currently looks like their plan is working with the IMF and embracing austerity measures for foreign currency loans, as well as settling their debts with China by giving up control over their main port for the next 99 years. Until next time, thank you and that's all I have to say about that. Hello YouTube, I'd like to thank my patrons over here for helping me put out my videos. If you want to support independent, nonpartisan news looking into the overlooked, join this growing list of exceptional individuals by clicking on that link in the description. Also remember to subscribe and ring that bell so that freedom will continue to ring. And if you like what you saw, remember to give me a thumbs up. Lastly, as always, thank you for watching. 